Now, let's briefly go and look at some definitions of AI that have been given and perhaps in the past and perhaps we can um, use them, uh, we can criticize them. Um, and these definitions now come from this book that you see down here. The first definition would be systems that do things that require intelligence of humans. This is a kind of definition of AI that tries to relate what systems do behaviorally to what humans do. So you would say the definition of Finlay Dix here, AI is concerned with building machines that can act and react appropriately adapting their response to the demands of the situation, such machines should display behavior compatible with that considered to require intelligence in humans. Actually, this definition, I think, is not from the uh, book here. This definition is from the Finlay Dix book, which you will find in Moodle, in the reading list in Moodle, um, if you are taking my course. Otherwise, just look it up in Google. Um, or... Now, this, I think, comes from the um, Artificial Intelligence book. The act of creating machines that perform functions that require intelligence when performed by people. Think for a moment, how can you criticize these definitions? Is this a good definition? Look at the Kurzweil definition down there. The act of creating machines that perform functions that require intelligence when performed by people. Is this really a good definition? What do you think? Okay, so well, I assume you have stopped the video, thought about it now. Let's see what we can say about that. The first definition, behavior compatible with with what is considered to require intelligence in humans. This obviously has some problems, right? To add two numbers would be an example. Behavior compatible with what is considered to require intelligence in humans. To add two numbers certainly requires intelligence in humans, but a calculator um, is not really artificial intelligence yet for our um, criteria, right? You would not today say that a simple calculator that can add two numbers is sufficiently artificial intelligence. Um, more clearly, to change money when a customer buys a Coke or a drink from a um, shop, you have a shop assistant, you pay for your drink, um, you get your drink, and you get the change for your money. Changing the money, calculating the change, recognizing the money are all actions that require intelligence in humans. But now I can create a machine that is obviously not intelligent in the sense of AI. I can create a vending machine. And this vending machine, you put coins inside and the Coke comes out and perhaps it even changes your money. But we wouldn't say that this is AI. A vending machine for soft drinks is not AI yet. So this definition is too loose, too broad, too general. To regulate the room temperature by turning an air conditioner on or off. This is something, again, requires human intelligence. Your dog cannot do it, probably. Your cat cannot do it. Uh, a dolphin, I don't know, probably cannot do it. So it requires human intelligence, but an air conditioner thermostat sticking on the wall does exactly this thing, but we wouldn't say that this is AI. This actually, you can build it in a purely mechanical way without any computational components. Um, thermostats have been built in this way for a hundred years uh, without electronics. They work with a piece of metal that will change its shape when the temperature rises. Um, and, and these don't contain any computational equipment. So it's clearly not intelligent, but it fits the definition. So this is a problem with this definition. These things can be done by primitive, non-intelligent machines, calculators, coke vending machines, aircon thermostats, um, and therefore they are not properly AI. Let's try another definition. Systems that think like humans, you could try to say. 
We have two definitions here again. The AI says the first definition is the exciting new effort to make computers think machines with minds in the full and literal sense. This is Hogland 1985. The automation of activities that we associate with human thinking, activities such as decision making, problem solving, and learning. Bellman 1978. Let's think about it. How can we criticize the first definition? Again, take a moment, stop the video perhaps, pause it, th think about it for a second, and then come back and we will continue. Now, the problem with the first definition, clearly, is that this is not about creating AI. This is creating machines with minds in the full and literal sense. So what he is talking about here is only strong AI. This is talking only about strong AI, not about weak AI. Um, and this is an unachievable, for the moment, goal, to create a machine with in the full and literal sense a mind. That doesn't seem to be something that we know how to do. Um, a Tesla car, which is one of the, or a self-driving car in general, is one of the most advanced kinds of AI that we have. Uh, nobody would say that it contains a literal mind. Um, your phone, your Google Assistant, you talk to it and it uh, dials a phone number. This is AI. Um, it does not contain a mind, clearly. So this would just exclude all the AI we have. Let's um, think of uh, another definition here. Uh, you can focus on acting like a human. The study of how to make computers do things at which, at the moment, people do better. So if you think of this, is this a good definition of AI? Can you come up with a criticism? Uh, AI is the study of how to make computers do things at which at the moment people are better. So this would be, you know, things like digestion. Uh, my, you know, eating a cookie and it coming out from another opening in a different uh, physical way, uh, appearance and chemical composition. Um, this is a process that humans can do much better than computers, actually. We don't have any machines that can digest food and produce energy. So this would be AI according to the definition, right? Make computers do things at which at the moment people are better. So you see from this definition is completely missing the element of the mental, of this be talking about intelligence, talking about mental processes. Things... Things is bad in every definition, right, as a word, because things is such a general um, word, at which people are better. Uh, you could also say, you know, um, uh, football playing uh, or, um, yeah, and, and if you make a machine that plays football um, better than humans, then this would be AI. It, it would not necessarily be AI. It would be a good sporting machine or sportsman simulation machine or sports robot. Um, it is not very much AI um, just because it can play football, right? So, uh, but I think digestion is really the better um, uh, term. Or, or a, s a smoking machine, you know, a machine that smokes a cigarette. At the moment, humans are good at smoking cigarettes, although it's not a good thing and it's not healthy and anything, but we are good at it. We can do it. Now I can make a machine that uh, more efficiently sucks the air through a cigarette, a pump, right, that sucks on a cigarette for a few minutes and the cigarette is sucked empty. It's, it's burned off. Uh, now I can say, okay, this thing smokes better than a human. Is it there for AI? No, obviously it's not AI, right? Uh, also, this has um, another problem. It is self-defeating, right? As soon as machines get better at humans at some activity X, doing X will stop being an example of AI. This is a, a big problem in actual AI because at all times people would say adding two and two is a question of AI. If a computer could add two and two, it would be intelligent. Now we have all these cheap calculators that can do it, and we say this is not AI. Um, 
Now let's make a program that plays chess for a long time. Again, people said playing chess is an example of AI. Now, um, we have chess computers since the mid-90s uh, that are better than humans consistently. Um, so now it would look like uh, suddenly playing chess is not AI anymore because people are not better at it anymore. Then we had Go playing. Um, since a few years now, computers are better at Go than humans. Um, so again, this would fall out of this definition because people are not better at it at the moment and therefore a Go playing program is not AI anymore. So this would always raise the bar. The, the bar of what is AI would be pushed back um, all the time by uh, the existing systems. And uh, finally, systems that think rationally would be another approach. You could say AI is the study of mental faculties through the use of computational models or the study of the computations that make it possible to perceive, reason and act. So what is the problem here? So one problem is both these definitions talk about study. AI is not only the study. This would be computational um, biology or something like this, computational neuroscience, uh, what is described here, not AI. AI is not only a study. AI is um, uh, part of engineering, uh, is an engineering discipline that tries to create an artifact that actually does these things. Um, Therefore, these, both these definitions are short uh, in, in that they um, try to limit AI to the study of something uh, where it is actually the construction of an artifact that does something. Um, the second problem might be both are about computations, computational models. It is not sure that AI is concerned only with computations. Um, this assumes already that AI systems that that um, our our mind is a computer, right? Mental faculties are computations, um, but it is not sure that that they are actually. It is perfectly possible that uh, it might be that our brain works in a way that cannot be described as a computation in any sense. Um, our brain might. Um, be based on the existence of a soul, for example, of a kind of mental substance. Um, nobody knows. And this soul might communicate with some soul of the universe, which produces the answer to other questions we have uh, without us realizing it. Um, so then there wouldn't be a computation. There wouldn't be a computational process uh, behind what we are doing. There would be some mystery of some universal soul. Um, so yes, yeah, so so these are the things. Uh, if you if you suppose that intelligence is computation, if you if you assume this, then you are actually begging the question because it might be that intelligence is not actually computation. So the final um, um, block of definitions here, uh, computational intelligence is the study of the design of intelligent agents. This is one possibility. AI is concerned with intelligent behavior in artifacts. So what are the problems of these two definitions? Do you see how these are problematic of definitions as definitions of artificial intelligence? Think about it for a moment. This is pretty obvious what the problem is here, right? They are both circular, right? Clearly. So uh, the first uh, pool narrows it down to computational intelligence, which is only a subset of AI and not even the most promising one. Uh, computational intelligence is the study of the design of intelligent agents. So if I want to say what is artificial intelligence and you tell me it's studying intelligent agents uh, or designing intelligence agents, then it's we are somehow uh, we're somewhat circular, right? Um, we have not really defined what makes an agent intelligent, and this is what the point, what we are asking about. If I knew what is intelligent, I wouldn't need to define AI. Then I would know, you know, create something artificially that is intelligent. But I'm asking because I don't know what is intelligent. 
And the second also, right, artificial intelligence is concerned with intelligent behavior in artificial systems. So what's the point of giving this definition? This is just repeating the question instead of actually giving an answer. So this now is from this book, um, Russell and Norvik. You see here is a figure 1.1 that gives you all these four um, different areas of definitions and in there places these eight uh, definitions. And... Uh, you can see that they, in the book, they um, propose to not decide, just use all these definitions together to get some impression of what AI is. But this is not satisfactory, particularly for a philosopher, right? This is for for uh, the, these um, uh, people, Russell and Novik, these are uh, programmers, these are uh, IT um, uh, people, uh, software developers, software teachers. Um, as such, they are not concerned very much uh, about the uh, quality of these definitions. They know what they are doing, right? In the same way like somebody who is teaching history is not generally concerned with the definition of history. Uh, or somebody who teaches philosophy generally does not uh, um, go into great anxiety about defining philosophy. We're, we're doing our thing. We don't need to define it. But if you now, as a philosopher, you approach these things and you ask, give me a good definition of AI, then you see that it is pretty difficult to give a good definition. All these definitions are, to some extent, problematic. Okay, so here you have more uh, readings. Most are from the Moral Robots blog, uh, at which I write uh, articles uh, that you can consider uh, as textbook articles for this course. Uh, because they give you the content of this course in a written form. So go there, uh, have a look at these different articles. You just need moral-robots.com um, 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 and then you will find the articles there. You can search through the site and find what you want. Okay, uh, I hope you have fun um, looking at these things and we are finished for the moment uh, for today, uh, the definitions of AI and uh, see you again next time. Thank you.